okay, so it's a little different. I've never reviewed a car twice before. Uh, so you guys may remember a bit of a, I guess at this point, infamous video that I did, but it was about a month ago where I reviewed the Fisker Ocean. The Fisker Ocean was the worst car I've ever reviewed. It still is, and that's what I called the video. But really, there were just a bunch, a, a ton of things about the vehicle that were annoying or unsafe or didn't work well or just a laggy, buggy mess. Okay, so a lot has happened since then, you might have seen. Um, besides all of the craziness of the accusations of me bankrupting the company or trying to or caring at all about the stock price, which I don't and never have, um, I do want to say that this is a really weird spot for this EV because of all that's happening with the company. So, okay, let me explain. I'm a product person. I care about the product. And the Ocean that I reviewed, that I got, that was on the road was running an older piece of software. And so the first thing that came up, even though there's a ton of things wrong with the car, the first thing that came up in some of the comments sections were, well, actually there's a newer version of software that's about to be available. And if you had waited a little longer, you would have actually been able to experience that and maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. And so this, what I have here behind me is a Fisker Ocean with the newest 2.0 software. So they reached out, Fisker themselves said, hey, we have a new one with the new software, you wanna check it out? And so I said, all right, sure, I'll give it a shot. But I should also give you a little more background just because, well, the other part of it is Fisker as a company may or may not be around to update the existing cars. See, the thing that happened with the original Fisker Ocean is they had a bit of a problem where they were unable to update their cars uh, via over-the-air software updates, which is kind of an issue, right? Considering these cars are basically computers on wheels and so many of them, a oh, bunch of lights, so many of them uh, get software updates on the regular to make them better, right? But the older Fisker Oceans that were out there, they had this issue with the software where they could not be updated over the air. So in order to get this newest big 2.0 update, Fisker has to send a technician out to you to every single one of these cars to manually update them to get them on the newest version of the software, which would ordinarily just kind of be a hurdle or an inconvenience. But now that Fisker, the company, may not exist very soon, it is really tough to say that this is going to change anything about my recommendation of the car. Nevertheless, you may be curious about if this big 2.0 update has actually improved the car. And just to show you guys what that looks like, you go down here to software and you can see this is Fisker Ocean version 2.0. And there's a couple other reviews floating out there. And I think there are some customers that are, I guess, starting to have technicians go out to them. We'll see how many people actually end up with 2.0. But I think the real question that you probably were curious about and that I was curious about when I at least said yes to this review was, okay, does the stuff that was terrible about the original Fisker Ocean actually get fixed with this software update? So I'll answer that. Now, first you may actually realize that this is a different, a physically different car. Fisker has brought a white ocean here and I actually think this one looks even better than the other one. I know the other one had matte paint but I think this color Fisker Ocean with the black wheels looks pretty good and they have this recycled carbon in the wheels which again is it's mainly for aerodynamics but it I think looks even better than the other wheels so this is a different spec of a Fisker but I still think it looks pretty solid. It's kind of got this little Aston Martin look which doesn't surprise anyone if they know about where the design comes from. But first things first, I had issues with the key fob. Are they fixed? Well, this top button is supposed to engage California mode. It didn't in the car I reviewed, but now on this car, if I hold it long enough, it does. It does actually open the front windows, the back windows, these unique little tiny rear three quarter windows, they actually open and the back glass rolls down. And as you can see, this top piece of glass is now totally open so yes california mode does work on this one now and i think if i hold it again it'll close everything up so that's good to see. actually i don't think it does okay it does closes everything up but the other issue i had with the key is that walking up to it wouldn't do anything and i have to unlock a few times to still get into the vehicle that didn't fix so i still had many issues with walking up and having to wake up the car and unlock and get in key fob 
not fixed. But then once I got in, there were a whole bunch of software and driving related things that had issues. So first of all, if you boot up the car, you might get an, a, any number of notification lights and then chimes and then you wait for those to be over. That still happens. And there's this new issue where, I mean, I guess it's kind of an issue, but not the end of the world, where the car takes a long time to boot up this big vertical screen in the middle. You can just watch a boot animation for like, it feels like a solid 60 seconds while the car turns on. You can drive it while it's booting up, and if you reverse, it actually does flip the cameras on, but it's weird that it takes that long now to boot up. It's like a new issue introduced with 2.0, but okay, fine. You wait, it boots up, you get into the car. Now, how's it doing? I put my foot on the brake, it turns on, and I put the car in drive and try to drive away, but my seatbelt's not on, nothing happens. It kind of wobbles back and forth. That still doesn't allow me to take the parking brake off without my seatbelt on, which leads me to believe it's kind of a feature, as annoying as it is. No other car other than the VinFast VF8 that I just tested does that to me. But once you do that, you can shift into gear and actually drive. This front screen in front of the driver turning completely red or completely blue based on acceleration or deceleration is also unchanged. It still flashes back and forth between red and blue, which is a bit distracting, especially at night. And when it's flashing right back and forth at that peak between acceleration and deceleration, it's really annoying. But then issue number three I had with Bluetooth, one of the few cars I've ever driven where literally just pairing to Bluetooth with my phone had issues, that was fixed. So I was able to pair my phone first try. It's now connected super easily and it has not cut out on me once in the week that I've been using it. Okay, Bluetooth is fixed. Another thing, uh, this car above my head has a bunch of solar panels. You can see here, this glass roof, totally taken up by a bunch of solar. Uh, on the old car, you literally couldn't see any details about how much energy that was generating, how many miles it got you, literally nothing. This is one of the things they've added. So if you jump in here, now there's a tab in the top middle that says solar sky. And you jump in there and you actually get a live look at, well, that doesn't tell you much actually, it says solar rate is 32%. Doesn't tell you wattage or exactly what's happening, but okay, it's kind of a cloudy day. I think that makes sense. And then the lifetime of the car, how much energy you've generated. This has been one of my concerns with cars with uh, solar roofs is they don't actually generate that much usable energy. For the lifetime of this car, which doesn't really mean much to you, it's generated 35 miles. I'll tell you that when we got this car a week ago, it had 29 miles and it's been parked outside at every possible available opportunity, literally nonstop for the past week and has gained almost six miles of range, which is, it's better than nothing, but it's, you know, it's a little less than a mile a day, just so you know. Oh, another big feature, there was no hill hold or brake hold in the first car that I drove. Now, if I drive forward a little bit and I hit the brake pedal and I stop, you get this H here, hill hold works. Brake hold thankfully works. This car does not roll around forward and backward on hills. You wouldn't believe how annoying it was that a car would actually do that to me. So thankfully that's also fixed. But then I just wanna say that in general, the lift off regen in this car needs tuning still. It needs calibration. There's been a lot of people talking about uh, literal brake failure while you're decelerating with lift off regen. I don't know if I'd call it failure, but it feels exactly the same as failure, where if you go over a bump, it will stop the regen and then recontinue after the bump. So if I'm decelerating towards a stoplight and a stopped car, and I go over a bump, it kind of feels like the car lurches forward and continues and may actually feel like you're gonna hit the car in front of you. That's not fixed. And also, the, just the different drive modes, again, it's Earth, Fun, and Hyper. Earth being the slowest. I can't believe they didn't do Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth being the slowest, Fun being the middle, and Hyper being the fastest. They all deliver what feels like the same amount of power, just with a delay. And I had some people say in the comments, this is actually a feature because in a safety event, you want to be able to get full power to accelerate out of something. And I, I get that, I understand that, I just don't think you need full power. I think you need 
a more tuned calibration of the accelerator pedal so that when you roll onto acceleration and off of it, you have a more predictable sense of what you're doing. Because in this car, you'll smack the accelerator pedal and nothing happens for two seconds and then it hurdles forward. That doesn't feel like the slow mode. So I still feel like that needs a lot of work. Now the random beeping and issues and beeps and bops that I was getting from the ADAS systems were greatly reduced, not fully to zero, but mostly reduced in a way that it's not painfully annoying to just drive around anymore. So that was fixed with software. And actually one of the things I didn't even notice, but that is actually going to matter to these cars is once you get 2.0, now you can start getting over the air downloadable software updates again, and you will be able to be plugged in while updating. You couldn't do that before. So I think in general, uh, there's a lot of things about this car that yes, can be improved and fixed with software, but a lot of it still comes down to the fact that this is Fisker's own software. It doesn't have Android Auto, it doesn't have CarPlay, and it's still a bit of a laggy, buggy mess. You know, I can get the reverse camera or the 360 camera on after some time. If I rotate the whole thing by pressing this button for a couple seconds, one, two, three, four, five seconds to rotate the UI and be usable again. And there's still just more delay than I would expect for a new car that costs fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. This is the, the main thing that I think if Fisker is to continue to exist, that they will need to work on for this car to be <laughs> acceptable. Oh, and there are a bunch of people who actually didn't realize this because I didn't say it in the video. So I'll just point it out now. Just like the Rivian, there are no uh, glove boxes in this car. There is the, the trays that I talked about, one taco tray here and one taco tray stuffed in there but they do actually have under seat storage uh, the same way the Rivian also does. It just doesn't have trays. So if you uh, twist this knob right here, this door opens and there's a slot for under, under seat storage. If you wanna drop some paperwork in there, or your, your hand sanitizer, or your microfibers or whatever, you have a, at least a little spot there. And again, I wanna make a note. This is a, this is a nice piece of hardware, like these seats, are very comfortable. This All this recycled material in here, I think that's why they call it the ocean and why a lot of the stuff they're proud of is in the materials department, but it's really well made. Nothing feels like it's gonna fall off or anything like that. Yes, this mirror is still tiny, incredibly small, but you do have nice soft microfibers. And I, yeah, there are plastics, but I don't mind that. I think this is a really nice interior, especially visually speaking, other than that. So look, I'm glad I was able to give the Fisker Ocean a second chance and I was able to actually see some real improvements and I can applaud them for that. I still also think that the fundamentals of this vehicle are solid. Like I've said, it has a decent battery. It has a decent profile. I think it looks okay. But I think the questions we're sort of thinking at the end here are number one, is it still the worst car I've ever reviewed? Honestly, if you look back at my channel now, at what I've been able to review, yes, it is still the worst car I've ever reviewed, but it's not by much. I have reviewed an original Tesla Roadster and a VinFast VF8, but I would still take those over this. But two, does this even matter? Does, does this improvement to a company that may not exist in a couple of days even matter anymore? Um, and that I really don't know the answer to. I've been able to experience real change, which I, again, I'm happy about, but uh, I still don't feel like I am able to recommend this version of this car, given the state of the company and everything happening to it. That's at least my fair warning for those who were considering a Fisker Ocean. And even if you're an owner now, have you gotten 2.0 software? Are you going to get 2.0 software? Tough to say. Nevertheless, this has been a, a quick update for those of you asking. Yeah, some things have changed. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.